Hello, Chapel by the Sea. Pastor Rhonda here with our second Curiosity Conversation. And this time our guest is Mike Wilson. Some of you may know Mike as the other half of Debbie Wilson, who has worked in our office uh, as our office manager at the chapel. Uh, but you may not know Mike, the other half. And so today you get to meet Mike Wilson, hear a little bit about his story, hear some of his heart, I think you're going to enjoy getting to know Mike a little better through our second installment of Curiosity Conversations. Enjoy. Um, Mike, why don't you just start by telling us a little bit about you? What, what do we need to know about Mike Wilson, for starters? Well, uh, to start off with, uh, um, I'm a local been around uh, not quite as long as Don Prokes, but uh, in his uh, footsteps um, through Clearwater High School and uh, lived here. And then Debbie and I met here and uh, were married in Dunedin. And uh, I served in the Navy for uh, off and on for 25 years. Uh, my last 10 years here at McDill in the reserves and I've flown with uh, FedEx for the last 20, 23 years. So I get a fair amount of uh, traveling in every month. And um, I, I can tell you guys, it's, uh, it's like this all over the world. Um, just back off a, a two week trip uh, a few days ago. And it, uh, it's, uh, it's very much like this all over Asia, all over uh, Europe, Australia, you name it. So it's, uh, um, it's not just here, although we're getting hit pretty hard right now, uh, especially in New York City, but um, it, uh, it's just the new normal for the time being until we get through all this. Um, Debbie and I have a son and a, a daughter. Our son and daughter-in-law live down at St. Pete. Um, he's fortunate to have a job that's keeping him employed through all this. He's actually uh, really busy as a result of it. Uh, he works with uh, Dex and Docs, which is a, a local company that has a, uh, their, their flagship office down in St. Pete. And then our daughter and son-in-law are up in Atlanta. And uh, the reason why that uh, uh, Debbie is going to, um, is giving up her position at the church so we can spend more time with them up there in Atlanta so we're looking forward to doing that this summer, especially once this is all over with. Um, that's kind of that's kind of me in a nutshell. Um, I can go into to great detail on all kinds of things if you want to fire some questions away. All right. So let's. <clears throat> you're you're one of the few Clearwater natives that are you know that attend our church. What um, what have you seen? change about Clearwater? What, what's different now than back when you were growing up as a kid? Um, it, you know, in a lot of ways, it, it's, uh, it's still very much the same. Um, although the, it, it's grown up a lot. There's, uh, as a kid, there was, uh, we would ride our bikes down to the beach. I, I lived about a mile south of the high school. So it was about a about a three or four mile bike ride. And, uh, you know, we would ride our bikes down to the beach. We had friends that lived down here and, you know, we'd hang out with them and, you know, it was, uh, it was, uh, it was a great place to grow up, especially for younger kids. Cause we had a lot of, a lot of free reign back then. Um, I vividly remember when they first built sunshine mall, that was, uh, the new go-to spot. Uh, first air-conditioned mall, I think, in the country, uh, which is now an apartment complex off of Missouri Avenue. Um, anyway, uh, the, the beach has grown up a lot, uh, as we all know, but uh, I, I still uh, think it's, uh, you know, it's a lot like it always was. Um, the, um, the biggest thing I see is... Uh, the demographics of the area are such that uh, it's not, um, oh, how would I just explain it? Um, as, as a kid, well, for example, when I was in high school, we were on double sessions because it was very crowded. 
and they hadn't built Countryside High School yet. Uh, so we had, uh, we had 5,000 students in high school and we had 1,200 in my freshman class. So that age group, um, you know, we're all in our late 50s, early 60s now. Um, uh, there were just an incredible amount of kids around. Uh, and I don't, I don't see that like it used to be. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's, uh, maybe it's because there's no place for them to go hang out now, because uh, that, that was a big part of growing up here. Um, anyway. Yeah. So, so you went to Clearwater High School. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> did you go straight to the military after that, to the Navy, right? Um, yeah, I, I went to the Naval Academy out of, out of high school um, in Annapolis and was there for four years. Um, uh, made some really lifelong friendships there. Uh, guys I still stay in touch with um, on a weekly basis. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Uh, a lot of guys flying for uh, passenger airlines now, Delta, United, American, that are having a really hard time. Uh, and it's unfortunate because they they had gone through this uh, right after 9-11 as well. But, uh, um, yeah, four years there for school and then uh, flight school in Pensacola. And Debbie and I got married and we, we, lived, uh, we lived all over. We lived in... Um, Washington State, north of Seattle on Whidbey Island. And we lived uh, back through Pensacola and then Virginia Beach and uh, did my last tour on active duty and um, somewhere out in Nevada, um, out in the middle of nowhere. And um, got on with FedEx and kept flying and came back, uh, came back to Clearwater. We've been here for the last 23 years. Did you spend a lot of time in, um, since you were a Navy pilot, did you spend a lot of time on aircraft carriers? Yeah, quite a bit. Uh, biggest part of 15 years. Uh, four major deployments. Uh, deployed uh, on a Constellation out of San Diego when I was on the West Coast in 85 and 87. Uh, we flew uh, missions in 85 uh, and 87 against uh, uh, Iran and the Soviet Union and uh, uh, ended up on the East Coast. Uh, I did two major deployments on the East Coast. Uh, uh, both carriers out of um, out of Mayport in Jacksonville, the Forest Hall in Saratoga. Uh, of course, 91 was Desert Storm and then 92 was, uh, was a med cruise that um, was fairly uneventful. Uh, so yeah, a lot, uh, a lot of time away, uh, you know, six months at a time. Uh, and then into the reserves at McDill, um, I thought that would be a really, a really uh, cush job, but the world changed in 2001 and got tied up in that and uh, ended up deploying for six months as a reservist with, uh, with uh, General Franks and CENTCOM to, um, to a cutter for Iraq in 03. Oh, wow. Wow. So, so you retired military then, right? Yeah, that's right. So, okay. From the reserves. You're from the reserves. And then you, you got the job with FedEx right out of the military or did you, what did you do? Yeah, I, I went to FedEx. I went to FedEx in 96 off active duty from Nevada uh, with about nine other friends of mine uh, at the same time. So it's, it's like the same group, um, just once removed further, further down the pipeline, you know, flying bigger airplanes. Uh, so it's a lot of the same, um, a lot of the same guys, a lot of the same, uh, um, backgrounds. Um, uh, you know, we fly with a lot of air force, ex air force guys, a lot of air force, uh, reservist or national air national guard guys, uh, coast guard, you name it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, there, there's a joke that has to do with the Tom Hanks movie and your last name. Yeah, yeah. Tell us uh, about that. Um, well, it's an interesting story. Um, most people don't know that when uh, they decided to make the movie Castaway, that, you know, had the infamous Wilson uh, volleyball. Um, 
a, a lot of people don't know that uh, that volleyball was actually the same volleyball that they used in the movie Top Gun on the, the beach scene. And uh, they just painted the red face on it for a uh, castaway. Um, uh, anyway, uh, yeah, after the movie came out, uh, they wanted to do the movie with UPS. UPS uh, uh, backed off on it and they approached FedEx and FedEx said, we'll do it for gratis. So uh, there was no charges uh, to the movie production from FedEx didn't make any money off of it. It was just like one big commercial for FedEx. But uh, yeah, when the movie came out, I tried to get that, that Wilson uh, volleyball on my ID card, my official company ID card. And <laughs> the security folks didn't uh, see the humor in that. So they didn't uh, like that too much, huh? Yeah. So your buddies call you Wilson. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's like everywhere I go, either Tom Cruise or Tom Hanks seem to make a movie about it. <laughs> well, um, so you're flying, you're flying all over the world now, um, and you did a recent tour you yeah. were in China and Europe yeah. and, and all over the place. Um, what, what, are, what are the, some of the lessons or some of the, uh, I don't know, what have you learned with all of your travels like that? The, uh, I think the biggest thing we all take away from it is uh, no matter where you go in the world, people are all basically the same. Um, uh, I have never had a, a really bad experience in, um, in China or in uh, anywhere in Asia for that matter. Uh, we've flown into Kazakhstan, the former Soviet Republic and uh, uh, it, People are basically pretty good all over the world. Um, you know, we uh, we were flying over Iran a lot until recently, and we'd talk to the controllers on the radios. And very well educated, very uh, very good English, very good radar control. Uh, obviously, a British influence uh, in Iran, um, but that that's been the biggest thing I've taken away from it. Uh, I guess the most uh, one of the most interesting things that sticks out in my mind was uh, one trip to um, Japan. I was in uh, Tokyo, Narita, the little town by the airport, and uh, was walking back from the the Japanese temple toward uh, toward town up a little hill to get lunch. And uh, a um, a school teacher was out on the sidewalk asking all the uh, the Anglo's, all the Americans, and Brits and Australians, if they'd like to come in and listen to a presentation that the elementary school was doing in English. So I went in and uh, sat through it. And um, I think they were maybe fourth graders, uh, all Japanese kids. Um, they did a like a 20 minute presentation in English. And, uh, and then afterwards, they wanted to talk to us. And, uh, you know, ask us, um, just to speak English and to show us how good they were and uh, ask questions. And I, that really hit home with me that uh, a country that was <laughs> not that long ago, our arch enemy in World War II, you know, has totally turned things around and, and uh, now they, they uh, require their kids to learn English to a very uh, solid degree at a young age, just to compete in the world the way things are. Um, I see that all over, uh, you know, China, Korea, um, uh, th there's not a place, there's not a place we go anywhere where you can't get by on English. And, uh, it's kind of remarkable to me. Uh, you would think it wouldn't be like that, but it, it truly is. Looking back, and this will be my last question and I'll let others <clears throat> pose their questions to you. <coughs> Excuse me. Looking back over your life, what's the thing you're most proud of? Uh, that, uh, mm, that there's actually a couple things. Obviously, uh, you know, I'm I'm very proud of uh, of uh, our kids uh, and the relationship that Debbie and I have, and uh, how close we are with our kids and grandkids. Um, uh, I've also got some uh, 
great pride toward uh, my parents uh, and what they went through. Uh, my dad was a Korean War veteran uh, who was wounded in Korea. And uh, uh, that is an ordeal I couldn't even imagine. Um, and that the whole generation that went through uh, World War II as well. Um, uh, and then going back a little deeper, um, we have some family history that is really, uh, uh, really makes me proud. I have a great uncle who was uh, uh, one of the founders that signed the, the Declaration and the Constitution. And uh, there's only five people that, that did both documents. And, uh, his name is James Wilson. He's from, uh, was a cohort of Ben Franklin's and uh, originally from Scotland. Oh, oh interesting. So, yeah. Um, well, I'm going to invite you guys to put your view back on gallery view so we can see each other. Um, the, let me open up the uh, conversation to others who might have a question for Mike. Make sure you unmute yourself. Fire away. I can, uh, I, can, I can talk all day if you get me going. I see uh, most everybody's still muted, Rhonda. Mike, it's a good day. Hey, Ed. And uh, I enjoyed your talk and very, very, very interesting. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <clears throat> I'm gonna miss your wife though. Take care. <laughs> <laughs> we won't be far away. I, uh, I, I would imagine we'll be around at least uh, at least at least once every month or so. Uh, probably spend more time up there in the summer and more time down here in the winter as things go on. We'll see how it works out. It'll be good seeing you both. Oh yeah. Thank you. Um, I also really enjoyed your talk, Mike. Um, I had the opportunity to go to China uh, maybe around 2008. And I visited some schools when I was in China, and I was also amazed by the level of instruction in English. And, and it was throughout China because their school system there is quite, um, it's not locally run, let's just put it that way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, so uh, I, I'm not, I just wanted to um, indicate that I've had a similar experience. And to say I enjoyed your talk. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Alice. Anybody curious about anything from a Wilson? <laughs> I'll just throw out something. Um, you know, it's um, it, it's it's kind of hard to to talk about yourself. Um, because most of us don't, uh, just aren't, it's not all about, it's not all about themselves. You know, it's normally about other people. And, and um, uh, that's the great thing about the church that uh, we have going on, I think. Um, I think uh, uh, for Debbie and I, uh, Debbie's absolutely loved it and uh, loves um, seeing all you guys. Um, I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed uh our time around the, the church and hope to continue doing so. Um, but I, I, I'll have to say that, um, of all the things I've ever done, um, the, uh, the classes that Joe and, uh, and Rick have put on have been absolutely, uh, uh, opening to me. And, um, it's, it's nice that we can still do that, uh, through zoom online in these circumstances. It sure makes things good. But what I was getting at was, um, I mean, we all like to talk with each other and it's all fine and dandy, but uh, you know, there's some major events going on right now that we're all trying to deal with. And um, I think uh, it's always good not to lose sight of, uh, of ideas and dreams and ideals um, as we talk with each other, because that's truly what, uh, what has made uh, this country so great. And, uh, and like I was saying earlier, I, I, I'm just fortunate that I get to contrast it with uh, other places around the world. And um, there's, 
there's not a lot of other places that have have uh, as much going on as we have here or going for us. Let me put it that way. Um, there's some beautiful places, scenery-wise, geography-wise, but there's just uh, there's something about this country that really uh, really stands out in my mind. Yeah, thank you, Mike. Well, um, let's wrap it up here, and let me say thanks to Mike and shall we? Thank you.